to get used to just worshiping. Come on, let's go. 
Absolutely spoiled rotten. I said I was not going to come on, but I could not help it. So I'm here today and not supposed to be here, so don't get used to this. I already told you. Like when your mama tell you she ain't gonna buy you no tennis shoes and you keep on coming back and asking. So she go and um you be wanting some Converse and she go and buy you some kids and tell you to get on out her face and don't ask no more. So yeah, I'm a black mama. <laughs> but I absolutely love you all and welcome, welcome, welcome. Wanted to get an opportunity before we go into today's lesson just to give you just a few uh, announcements. And one is, don't forget, some of you all were asking on the page uh, on yesterday. And I think you all know me by now. I'm not... Um, I'm not a hustler, so, you know, if the Lord doesn't lead me to say things, I just don't. But some of you were asking, and I saw several posts this past week about praying from the third dimension and how can you get the book and the workbook. And they're both available on Amazon.com. It was way too much. And um, I want to tell a little story about that, so I'm going to write myself a note. Um, I'm going to write myself a note because I want to incorporate that in today's lesson. And um, you're going to go to JuanitaBottom.com and it'll take you right to Amazon.com. And many people have ordered from the page and they are continuing to order from the page. And you get your book directly from them, the workbook, and praying from the third dimension book itself. And also, both the book and the workbook and the Juanita Bynum Topical Bible, it is offered in six different languages. So if you know somebody that speaks German, that speaks French, that speaks uh, Portuguese, Spanish, and they would like a copy of the Topical Bible as well as the uh, workbook and praying from a third dimension, they can order it also in different languages on JuanitaBynum.com, which will take you to Amazon.com to get your book from them. And um, I wanted to get an opportunity to open up today's lesson, I'm not going to be before you uh, long today because it's a it's an extra day, but I have to make certain that I am giving you what God wants you to have. And so I wanted to get an opportunity to go back a little bit to um, the scripture that talks about uh, Isaiah the 11th chapter. And I saw this scripture um, in another translation that I thought was very, very powerful and very noteworthy. Um, I wasn't able to cover everything that I wanted to cover yesterday, so that's why I'm here today. So if you've just joined in, um, we're blessed. I almost didn't get here because why does it take you so long in the phone company? It's like... You need to carry a bag lunch or something. It's like, y'all don't order, offer nobody no juice, no water. You just let them sit here. I can't stand going to the phone company, but I dropped my phone and broke it and had to go get another one and didn't think I was going to be able to come on today. But my old phone is letting me go on Wi-Fi because my new phone wouldn't open up to Facebook. So, you know, I'm, I'm just determined to, to keep my word. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to give it everything. And when it doesn't happen, it's because I absolutely tried everything and it just didn't happen. So um, I done ran to the phone company and, and speeded back and trying to do all of this, but nevertheless, we're here. When you look at Isaiah, the 11th chapter, and um, I want to read this in the Message Bible. I saw this. Invite somebody into the page and follow us. Don't just like the page, but uh, follow us. That's how we make an impact in the kingdom of God. 
um, the same way secular people do. Uh, people follow foolishness. So, you know, if this page is being a blessing to you, don't just like the page, follow the page. You can turn off notifications so you don't have to get notifi notified every time we post something if, if that's what you uh, so desire. But we don't sit here and, and, and ask you for offerings and things like that. So the least that you could do is favor me with your follow. Um, please. Thank you. Um, it reads as such, because we're talking about managing the miracle. Managing the miracle. How do I bring myself to manage the miracle that God has given me? We, 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 we turned the lesson yesterday um, by talking about how people, you look at some people accomplishing things and, and others are not. And if God says that I'm not uh, a person that is partial, then what the Lord is doing for one, it's available to all. It's available, it's available to all. Now, whether or not everybody know how to access it, that's a whole nother horse of a different color. And so what we're talking about now is access to what is already available to you. And there could be several reasons why we have not received it. And so yesterday, I started out with um, where we ended up because we've come to the place of, of knowledge. We've come to the place of knowledge and we covered understanding. So yesterday, if you're coming in for the first time, we were trying to understand why the Lord would have us to, to be interested in knowledge and understanding. And when you look up the word knowledge, it says understanding. And so my thoughts are when the Lord is trying to give us something, um, he repeats it. He repeats it. And so repetition for the Lord is, I know you heard this the first time, but I want you to hear it deeper the second time. Because I know you heard me say knowledge the first time, but I want you to know that there's a deeper revelation even to knowledge. And so I put both of them there because though they are one in the same, yet they do operate in different functions. And we're going to see that. And so we talked about the first group, the group of understanding, comprehension, grasp, and command. The person that takes charge of what God has given him. We talked about uh, the leader, the leader of the group. I'm now heading it up and I'm controlling it. I'm overseeing it, and I'm requiring more from it because I am the manager. Yesterday, God gave us that, for he performs that, is planned for me, and he is mindful of many such things. So let's get clarity right here. You don't ever, and please hear me, and take this as a prophecy from the Lord. You don't ever have to worry about whether or not something is going to come to pass that the Lord has spoken because the Bible says that he watches over his word. He pays attention to what he has said. Why? Because the Lord now is responsible for performing that. Are you hearing me? He's not like us. And I think a lot of times because of, 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 of really the way we operate in things, we think God operates the same way and he doesn't. And the Lord doesn't. He doesn't operate the same way that man does. The Lord is responsible for what he says. And if he tells us that he's going to do something, he's obligated to do it. He's obligated himself to do it. It, 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 it it's, not, it's not that he's wondering whether or not it's going to come to pass, but the bottom line of it is, is do we understand what God has given us and can we hear 
what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us. And that's where um, the problem comes in. The problem comes in because God is watching over his word to perform it, but we're not paying attention to the word, and we're watching over the enemy's word, and we're performing a word that doesn't belong to us. I just said something right there. Do you know where we would be by now if we paid as much attention to what God is saying to us than we do what the enemy is saying to us and about us? Are you hearing that? Do you not know that the attention and the thought that you give to a thing is what causes that thing to manifest in your life? Why? Because your mind being upon a thought now causes you to come into agreement with that. And so then the reason why it's not coming in a way that you think it should come is because the Lord is speaking one thing, but you in agreement with something else. My God. My God. The Lord is speaking one thing, but you are in agreement with something else. How can two walk together except they agree? How, how can you walk in the pathway that God has set for you if you don't agree with God? How is that possible? How can I really hear? How can I, how can I help myself to understand that I really heard God? Because I walk with him. Because I'm in the direction that he is in. I'm not in my own direction. I'm going in the direction of the Lord. Now watch this. Now watch this. We're bringing the two together. We are bringing these two together. And I want you to see this. I want you to see this. It says here. It says here. That. Knowledge. Is. Understanding. Knowledge is understanding. But let me see what God is trying to tell us here. So then if knowledge is understanding, then what is, what, what is this extension of, of, of understanding, this revelation of understanding that God is trying to bring to our minds today to help us? Because, see, I'm here, I'm here to help us to get out of the quicksand. I'm here to help us get out of the holding pattern. Because many of us have been in the holding pot. Well, the Lord going to do it. He said he going to do it. Well, I'm just going to wait on him. Do you not know, uh, and let me, let, me just, let me just make this point. Do you not know that Christians have taken that whole weight thing out of context? Because for a lot of us, for a lot of us, up until now, the whole weight thing, if you really look at that thing in the spirit, it's an opportunity for you to be powerless because a lot of things we think we waited on that's been gone so long ago and so when you're not capable of bringing something into manifestation we call it waiting on God because the Christians want to pass we want to pass we want to be able to say that the reason why I don't have this is because I'm waiting on the Lord so now it becomes God's responsibility as to the reason why I don't have it. I have nothing to do with that. I don't have it because maybe it ain't the Lord. Maybe it ain't the Lord's time. Maybe, maybe, maybe it ain't God. Maybe, maybe it's the fact that the window that God had opened when he spoke it to you, you delayed in moving. And maybe you missed the timing of God. And maybe... The Lord got me sitting on this Facebook page to let you know that I'm offering you another window and will you miss it the next time? Maybe what the Lord has to say to you today is that I'm giving you a second opportunity to get to destiny. Will you forfeit it again by listening to what the enemy has to say? Or will you get complete understanding that I am preparing you? Preparation is different from non-movement. Okay, when God got ready to use Esther, it wasn't the timing of the Lord for her to execute what God had placed her there for. But there was movement being done all the time to prepare her for that moment. 
Are you hearing this? Anybody listening today? Anybody listening today? We want to pass. We don't want the preparation stage. We don't want, we don't want God. We don't want God to prepare us for anything. We just feel like the spirit of God. I told you about that mayonnaise mentality. It's like just spread it on. Just, just spread the glory on. Just, just spread the spirit on. And God just going to do it because he said he's going to do it. And I need a miracle. So, 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 so we've even misunderstood the whole miracle thing. We've misunderstood that. We've misinterpreted a lot of even what that means. Because, yes, there are two forms of miracles. There's a miracle when the person is blind and the Lord opened their eyes. There's a miracle when the person is lame and they can't walk because of an accident. Or they were born that way, paralyzed, and God gives them a miracle. But then there is another time when the Lord will give you a miracle that you have to participate in the miracle. Lord Jesus, have mercy. There has to be some level of participation from you in order for the miracle to come into manifestation. Jairus' daughter received the miracle, but he had to participate in going after Jesus. And then when he got there, he had to trust that who he was asking help from had the ability to help him. He had to ask him, will you come to my house? I got a daughter that's laying here sick and now they've given me word that she's dead. But what did the scripture say? What did the scripture say? And I will never forget this as long as I live. It was, it was during the season when, um, when the Lord had me, had me praying um, for, um, he had me praying for, uh, for Bobby Christina. And early on, when they said, you know, she was going to die and she wasn't going to come out of the coma and, and there was and there was really no 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 help for her and, and all of this. And the Lord sent me on an experiment and I will never forget this. I will never, ever, ever forget this. God sent me on an experiment. And in the experiment, um, he began to talk to me about going beyond what you see. And going beyond what you hear. And so the Lord took me on a consecration. And as I began to consecrate, as I began to consecrate, uh, the Lord began to show me things in the spirit. He began to show me different parts of her brain to pray for. And I began to go on this journey with the Lord right here in this house. And I got people that was, that was here at the time can witness this. And I couldn't eat anything. And the Lord would, it, it, it would be like, I would go to the couch and God would put me out like I was like I was dead. And I would be out for hours. And I would see her brain in the spirit. I would see different things in the spirit. I was calling out names and praying for parts of the brain that I knew nothing about in the natural. In the natural. And when I said to them, she's going to wake up. Because I saw that connection. I saw that connection. And as I began to pray for her, that was an experience for me because what God was saying to me, there's another dimension. And if I can just get people to participate with me, I know the way. The answer is already there, but it's not going to come while they're trusting a realm that is beneath what I have for them. It can happen that way. It cannot happen that way. So then when you look at this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. It says here that knowledge and understanding, let's take knowledge. Knowledge, it said, when we are going after that word knowledge, knowledge is what I am taught. Now follow me on this. Knowledge is what I am taught. I am, I am taught knowledge. I am taught knowledge. And when I have knowledge, that which I have been taught, I'm able to master. But watch this. I want you to, I want you to follow this so close today. I want you to follow this because when I tell you, my eyes came open to this. He said, but when I said understanding, Knowledge is what I learn. Knowledge is my, is, my, is my schooling. 
Knowledge is 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 what I, I, I find somebody else to 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 teach me. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Because knowledge is also there's a word in knowledge called capacity. Follow me. Please stay right there in your head. Stay right there. Capacity. I want you to get this. Capacity. Capacity is to hold what is taught. And takes it to a level of mastery. So if I am to gain knowledge, then I must pray for capacity. Because if I don't have capacity, I can't hold what I'm being taught. And therefore, I will never master it. And if I never master it, I will always have some money. But I won't walk in the wealth that God promised me. Are you hearing this? Watch this. Watch this. Capacity. So, so then what is capacity? Capacity is volume. It's size. It's magnitude. It's, watch this, it's proportions. It's dimensions. You heard me talking about that? It's dimensions. He's taken us from the realm of the world into dimensions. Now watch this. From the realm of the world. Somebody said, well, well, what does realm mean? Because I hear people saying, I'm going to another realm. Mm. You go into another realm, you go into another city. You go into another state. I, I, I want you to get this. I want you to get this. Because realm means an area or a territory controlled by a ruler and a field, a land. It means earth. Who controls the earth? A part of Earth, California, in England, the Queen Queen Elizabeth, she's the queen and the ruler over England. Are you following that? Are you following that? So if we start talking about realms, we're only talking about, listen, we're only talking about the graduation towards God. We're not talking about the realm in God. Because God is not realms. When you look at realm as, as something that is spiritual, God is the realm. And the realm of God is a spiritual reign or authority of God. The rule of God or Christ in the future age. Which means when I go to a, not another realm, when I go to the realm. When I leave this earthly realm and I go to that realm, when I leave the demonic realm and I go to that realm, I am now becoming a partner with the God that is in control of the future. So I don't shake, I shift. Oh God, I love you for that right there. I don't have to be all up in Adam when I'm confronted with issues because I have left this realm. And I have gone to the realm. And the realm is in Christ. Are you hearing this? Because if I get in that realm and I get in Christ, I'm broke now, but I can become a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, old things have become new. That's my old mind that the devil is trying to talk to because he knows that when he used to talk to that mind, then I would obey what he said. But I've been transformed. I'm in Christ. I'm in the realm. Now I got a new mind. Are you all hearing this? Anybody hearing this? Why do you think that when Jesus was led up in the spirit by the enemy, watch this, the enemy tried to offer him, he said, he said, listen, listen, I will give you all this if you would bow down and worship me. You know why he was offering him all of this? Because that's the realm he controls. And what Jesus was trying to say to him, I created you. I'm such an awesome God, I created my own adversary. I created you. And you offer me something that I created in the beginning. How can you offer me something that don't belong to you? I gave you dominion of this because I gave the people the power to choose whether they want to be in this realm or whether they want to be in the realm. 
And it's too many believers that are out there that are claiming this realm but living in this realm. Claiming this realm but thinking from this realm. Claiming this realm but operating from this realm. You got your realms mixed up. Who is God talking to right there? Who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? See, because watch this. Who? Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. So why is he putting these two together? Why is he putting knowledge in the same passage as, as, as um, understanding for the seven spirits of God? Why does he say that seven more devils will come that were worse than them? And they're worse than them, not because they're coming to make you a murderer, not because they're coming to make you a rapist, but they're worse to them because they're the ones that are coming with strategy. Lord have mercy. I ain't getting nobody to say nothing. I remember when I was when I when I was younger, um, my daddy rest his heart, Jesus, rest in peace, Daddy. Um, I remember when I used to go out on the playground at school and stuff like that and 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 and, and, and fight. And some of y'all gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. But when I used to fight, I used to fight like this. You know, you put your head down, you just start swinging, 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 swing. I used to fight like that. And my daddy said to me one day, you can't beat nobody up like that. You don't even know what you hit. He said, you wearing yourself out because you swinging that air. The majority of them swings, you ain't hitting nobody. You just hitting the air. And that person going to come back and pick at you again. Because you fighting like you scared. He said, hold your head up. And I was like, Okay. He said, hold your head up. I said, all right. I said, but if I hold my head up, then if they hit me in my face, he said, that ain't going to happen. And I said, but daddy, it is going to happen. If I hold my head up like that and they start fighting me next week, they're going to hit me in my face. He said, it ain't going to happen. He said, you know why it ain't going to happen? I said, no. He said, because you're going to hit them first. He said, why are they talking? You're going to punch them first. He said, you got to see what you're hitting. And when you make that first hit, you got to know that it's a hit that is going to take them out the game. Oh, is anybody listening? Is anybody listening today? Because we out there fighting like I used to fight when I was fighting the devil like this. No, he said that the reason why when the temple is swept, but it's not washed, that seven more devils is coming worse than them. Because these are coming with strategy. Hayabosha. These know exactly where to hit you. To take you out the game. These know exactly what they think is going to hurt you. To the point that it's going to make you throw your hands up and say forget it. But tell the devil not this time. Because I recognize what it is you are about to do. And now that I know that these next demons, they're strategizing against the seven spirits of God. Because I done sent an alert that says, I'm tired of living like this. I'm tired of operating like this. Now that I'm sweeping my life, here they come. And they're coming to strategize against what God has already said is in my life. So now I got you. And now I know you strategize and so am I. So let the games begin. Do I have anybody out there that's listening today? Anybody out there that's listening today? Because you can't be acting like no punk getting ready to manage no miracle. How in the world are you the manager? And you running from the devil. How you the manager? And your knees buckle every time something happens. Because hits come. And they're going to come because you are manager. But you have to understand that when hits come, it's for you to reorganize, not for you to fumble, not for you to crumble. It's God's way of letting you know that something is out of order. It's an opportunity. It hasn't come against you. What the enemy thought was coming against you by the time it gets to you. The manager, the person who's in the mindset to know that God has set me over this miracle to manage it. It's your opportunity. It's the devil's attack, but it's your opportunity. It's what he thought would take you out, but it's what God is going to use to take you over.
Because now you're going to recognize that there's a problem here. And when you look up the word trouble, it means when something is out of order, when something is chaotic. So what God does with trouble, he gives you an opportunity to set order because you are the manager of the miracle. You don't go somewhere in the corner and start crying. What you crying for? Who am I talking to today? What you crying for? I just, I just, I just, I just keep trying. It's just so sick. Kentucky Fried Chicken tried nine times, and now we got chicken. I want y'all to stop. What you crying for? You crying because God has chosen you to give you a strategy? What you depressing about with it? I just tried and don't seem like nothing, nothing happened. It is happening. Because all that's messed up is an opportunity for you to stay calm, get some tissue, blow your nose, stop all that whining, give the whinings back their name, and figure out what's wrong. Because I'm going to say something to you right here. Jesus. Whoo. Why? Because understanding is what? Now we're getting ready to get to the bottom of it. Understanding means to absorb, to take it in. Watch this. Watch this. Understanding means to absorb, to take it in. Jesus. Watch this. Understanding means assimilation. Assimilation. Assimilation means to integrate. In other words, to integrate means to combine one thing with another so that they become a whole. So don't tell me, I understand what the Lord, I understand what God, you can't understand unless you are assimilating. The only, of the only proof that you have that you understood what God told you to do. You are assimilating. You are taking what God said and you are putting it with what God told you to do. And you are combining two things as one. That's how I know you understand what God is saying. Because I understand the power of integration. Now, I cannot just hear it. With my natural ears, I have to hear it in my spirit. And when my spirit understands it, I have to incorporate that into my everyday life. Which means everything I do, everybody I associate with, all my old friends. If you don't fit what God has said to me, then I got to disassemble you from my presence. I can only allow to be assimilated into my life according to the plan of God. Are y'all hearing this? Is anybody hearing this? Why y'all make me come back on here today? Are you hearing this? You're going to get an opportunity today to start taking stuff out that did don't belong there. That ain't a part of the vision. This ain't a part of the vision. He didn't tell me to do that. This person then came over here telling me, let me help you. You ain't supposed to be here. That one ain't supposed to be here. And everybody that is supposed to be here, you better get it together. Because I got a big pair of scissors. Anybody listening? Is there anybody listening? Because we become too emotionally involved with people to the point that we can't see what God is trying to show us. And so you got a lot of dead weight. You're not a helicopter. You're not an airplane. You're a rocket. You're going to, watch this, you're going to the ramp. A helicopter can only go up so far. An airplane at the 36,000 feet, somebody going to start losing air. A rocket goes out of space. It goes beyond those realms. It goes beyond the realm of sound. Are y'all hearing what God is saying? The speed that that thing is traveling is incredible. Have you ever wondered why there is no side windows? On a rocket. The only wonder that they got is the one that's in front of you. 
that's got you looking up. It ain't no, let me look over there and see what they're doing. Let me wave their back. One way. I want you to see the sky because that's your goal. Your goal is to go there to where the stars are. Your goal is to go there to where the moon is. Not who's over here at the grocery store. Not what they doing over there. Not what they saying on Facebook. Not who don't like me. Not what they did to me last year and 10 years ago. You listen. You still in a helicopter where there's windows all around. You still on a plane where you can look out of anybody's window. You're not on a rocket yet. You're not getting ready to go to the ramp. God, who is he talking to today? Your speed is too slow. Your speed is too slow because you're trying to carry too many people. And half the people you're trying to carry is the wrong people. Oh, God. Somebody need to say, Dr. Bynum, you teaching to me. You talking to me. You talking to me. I came back up from this. It's time to manage the miracle. He didn't already gave it to us. Why would the Lord give you all of what you have? Why would the Lord give you the talents that you have? Why would God put people in your life that can help? Oh, God, I will show you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I just heard you. Why would God put people in your life? And then you got dead people in your life that ain't doing nothing for you. And they got an attitude against the people that really can't help you. And here you are with yourself talking about, well, they've been my friends for 20 years. So I don't want to hurt their feelings, but I know she could really help me take my vision of where God wanted to go. But my friend don't like her. And you're the one that's been taking care of your friend for 20 years. You're the one that keep paying her light bill, her gas bill, her rent. Who is he talking to? Just be honest and say me. Because he talking to somebody on this page. Who? I'm not going to move another inch until I at least say, see me. I know I ain't got my glasses on. I can't see that far where this camera is, but somebody better put up me. Because we cannot continue in this manner. Not when you've been called to manage a miracle. You cannot become a person that lives in your emotions. Not when you've been called to manage a miracle. You cannot Put soul ties over the miracle. You cannot put relationships over the miracle because the door that God has opened for you right now, you may not get another chance. And I feel this in the Holy Ghost that this is somebody's moment. That the Lord is breathing in your direction for the second time around. Some of you all for the third time around. That the Lord's eyes is upon you again. And that the mind of God has turned towards you. Because he's introducing you and reintroducing some of you all to his plan. Because I'm ready to perform it. But I cannot, said the Lord, sit back and let you make the same mistakes that you made two times over. Because now is the time for the vision to come to pass. Who is God talking to? My God from Zion. Jesus. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? And watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Assimilation. Assimilation. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was getting ready to cut y'all off in about two seconds and he said, no, finish this. Assimilation. Assimilation. I'm Understanding, understanding. Now, 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 now. The spirit of understanding. So the seven spirits of God. The spirit of understanding. I need the spirit of understanding. Because now I need to know how to assimilate. How to integrate. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Understanding also means insight. Insight means vision. Yeah. How can you go somewhere and you don't have a vision? The Bible said without vision, people perish. That's why we are destitute. That's why we are lonely. That's why we are tossed to and fro by every wind and doctrine. That's why we are unstable. That's why we are unsure. That's why we have no confidence because we have no vision. Jesus. What does vision have to do with understanding? Understanding. Look at this. Understanding. Different from knowledge. Here is the difference. Understanding different from knowledge. Here is the difference. Right here. I'm going to show you something. Right here. Right here. One word. One word. One word from the dictionary. The difference between all that I've read about knowledge 
and all that I read about understanding was the fact that knowledge is something that I learned in school and I learned to master. But understanding is something that has in it a word called revelation. Good God have mercy. When I have understanding, I qualify for revelation. That's not in knowledge. Knowledge is what somebody teach me. Revelation is what's revealed to me. And when I ask God for the spirit of understanding, I am asking him for revelation. I am asking him to breathe his mindset into me. And what is revelation? Revelation is now I've been given a belief system. I've been given a view of something. Watch this. And if I got a view of something, I can take a different position on it. Why can I take a, a different position on it? Watch this. Because now I'm under the law of persuasion. And when I get under the law of persuasion, underneath this word understanding set, now I have a conviction about what I believe. Now I am not confused about what God is trying to say to me. I have a conviction now. My destiny is spiritual to me. It is no longer natural. It is no longer if I want to do it. It's a divine call from God. It's a divine It's a divine revelation from God. He revealed it to me. And now I have a belief system. When I get this belief system, it provokes me to an article of faith. I'm giving you what the dictionary said that almost made me run around this house yesterday. It gives me an article of faith. And what is an article of faith? It makes me write an article of faith. And what is an article of faith? It is a statement of a shared belief in the form of a fixed formula summarizing my care and my tenants, meaning summarizing my position. I write it down. I decree and declare that I agree with God. I'm going to write it down because this is my stand. This is my stance. This is my position. This is now my belief. This is now my conviction. This is now my point of view because I've got a revelation. Because I had a vision. Because now God is calling me to assimilate and integrate what he has revealed to me. Good Lord have mercy. Jesus, why y'all making me teach this home? Why y'all making me teach this home? So I'm going to the realm of God. And the realm of God is concerned about my future. So now, why have I been saying that we're going to dimensions? Because dimensions is the length, the width, the breadth, the depth, the volume, the extent, the reach, the range, the degree. Now I'm asking God to dimensionalize me so that I don't miss the breadth, the width, the length, the height, the extent, the reach, the range, the degree. I said I was going to make a point with this book. I remember when I was just coming back on Facebook and um, people have always had things to say about me and they always will because I'm famous. That's what happens to people that have popularity. I'm sorry. You're the target of interest. People live their lives by waking up to see what you're going to do just so they can see what they can complain about. So I've learned to, to, to live with that. And as long as I'm alive and even after I'm dead, they're not going to stop. People are going to always talk about me. I'm a target. So, sometimes, and I'm gonna give you this as a lesson to you, but I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you hear me, and I'm giving this to you as a lesson to you. Sometimes you can keep listening to dumb stuff that people have to say, and what you don't realize is that the enemy has come to strategize against you because he already know what the Lord has already done for you. And God rebuked me about this because sometimes you can start listening to all that crazy stuff out there about you. And when the Lord told me to do this book, I printed maybe 500 
and said, I'll just, you know, I'll just do the books and, and I'll just, you know, sell them out of my basement. And I'll just mail them off from my house. And when the orders came in overwhelming to the point that I couldn't no longer handle it, it was like the Lord was saying, that's what you get. Because if you're not careful, you'll get inside of another person's mind about you. And you won't operate in the realm that God has taken you to. And you won't operate in the realm that God has called you to be. And you will miss an opportunity. You will end up having to fumble with it. Because your mindset became obedient to the thoughts of man. When the scripture said, let every man be a liar and let God be true. And I'm talking to somebody right now that I know the Lord is talking to you. And God is dealing with you about you, about you becoming the manager of your miracle. That's why you got to shut all that junk down. That's why when the enemy comes after you, know this. That he's not coming after you. For nothing. He's coming after you because the Lord has done something for you. And he don't want you to see it. He want to keep slapping your face over here so you can keep looking this way. When the miracle is right here, he don't want you to see it. And every time you turn around to look at the miracle, he got something else going on. Just to keep your head turned away from God. And every time the Lord starts speaking in your ear and you go to make that turn toward the Lord, here comes something else. And so, yes, I'm on camera. Yes, you all can still hear me. Yes, you all can still see me. But I can only see, you can only see a side profile. I can't look at who I'm ministering to. Because the devil got my attention over here. I can't look at what I'm supposed to be managing. Because the devil got my attention over here. I can't look at the miracle that God has set in front of me because the devil got me looking right here so here listen here is the miracle but i'm in a side profile position good lord have mercy who is god talking to right now you better turn your head around you better set your gaze before the lord like the book of proverbs says you better do what the scripture said here you better look at what the scripture said here. The message Bible in Isaiah the 11. That last scripture, they interpret it this way. Wait a minute, here it is, 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 here it is. Oh God. The last part of that scripture says, I'm off and running and I'm not turning back. For what has the Lord given you? I'm going to read it in the Amplified Bible. The life-given spirit of God will hover over him. The spirit that brings wisdom and understanding. The spirit that gives direction and builds strength. The spirit that instills knowledge and the fear of God. And the other translation said, it was coming from Philippians 3, 3, 12 and 14. Let me go to it. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Philippians 3, 12 through 14. Jesus, Jesus, it says, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that I have this all together. In other words, he said, I count not myself to have apprehended. I count not myself to have gotten every little bitty thing that God is saying. He said, I'm not saying that I have this all together, that I haven't made. But I am well on my way, reaching out for Christ, who has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, 
Don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this. But I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and running and I'm not turning back. I don't count myself to be perfect. I don't count myself to be a person who've never made a mistake. I don't count myself to be somebody that know it all. But at least I got my eyes on the goal that God has set. I'm off and running and I'm not looking back. And I encourage you to do the same because the Lord has called you to manage your miracle. Don't forget to go to the website and get your book. Get your workbook. Let you know how much I appreciate you. Get your copy of the Topical Bible. And I'll see many of you at the banquet and the graduation. I love y'all with the love of the Lord. And until next week, you all go with God and, and, and just, just, be, just be faithful to the Lord. Because he said, I'm going to perform that which is my plan for you. You ain't going to lose this time. You ain't going to give up and you ain't going to give in. You going on. I don't know about you. But I'm the mama on this page and I believe in you. I believe in you. I absolutely believe in you. Don't forget. Be happy, be strong, and don't forget to just be plain on you. Come on.